Amen. So I hope you can hear me because this is really difficult. I'm not receiving any feedback to make sure that uh, everybody can hear me. So I'm concerned that you may not hear me. So I need to know that you are hearing me. Okay. Hallelujah. So I cannot hear you for some reason. But that's all fine. Yes, I cannot hear you for some reason. But that's all good. Hallelujah. We're going to figure it out. But if you can hear me, that's the most important. Uh, I wanted to make sure that you can hear me all to go together. So tonight, we're going to just uh, touch on the topic of uh, the, king, uh, the church and ministry. Hallelujah. We want to talk about the, the topic on church and ministry and uh, the theme that we have uh, tonight for the grace and by the grace of God is to be able to understand how the story that we have is scheduled by God for a change. And I want to say that again, is how to understand that the story, our story is scheduled by the Lord for a change. And by the grace of God, we will be able to go through this, we'll be able to understand that and then to be able to flow through. Amen. So without further ado, let's pray. Father, I bless your name, Lord God, for all that you do. I bless your name, Lord Jesus, for your goodness and your grace. I bless you, Lord God, as you are helping us, Lord God, to deliver your word. I pray that over thy people, I pray, Lord God, over thy word, Lord God, your spirit be efficient. That your spirit, Lord God, be efficient in a way, Lord God, that we understand your word. Give us the understanding with clarity. Give us, Lord God, the strength to deliver it and give us the ability to receive in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen? So, on the topic of the story that God has for you is scheduled for change, it means that there are seven different dimensions or levels, I will call levels, or shift in the spirit in order to have a story schedule for change. When I talk about scheduling, I'm talking about the fact that God is able and capable to put into his calendar your life story. And that story, it is appointed for a change. The word of God tells in the book of her, Habakkuk chapter, chapter 2, he speaks of how we are. He is set, hallelujah, upon the watchtower in order to see and to hear what the Lord has to say. And the word of God says that it is appointed for a time. The vision is appointed for a time. So God does make appointment. He does schedule things. He does things with a schedule. He does things with organization, with order. And as he does those things, he helps his people to enter into the dimension of what he has called them to. So when we take the first one, we have seven different shift, dimensional shift of scheduling by God to change the story of somebody. The first one, I'm going to just give the overview of it, and then we will break it down. So the first one is a divine appointment, which is a chaos moment. The second one is the call to surrender, amen, which is the brokenness. The third one is the power of transformation, which is the renewal. The fourth one is the embracing of purpose, which is the calling. The fifth one is a community of faith, which is eventually the church. The sixth one is a ministry of reconciliation, which is the service. And the seventh one is the hope of glory for eternity. Hallelujah. So we're going to go on the first one. I would like you to have the word on the screen, please. On the book of Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4. We will even start from verse 1. Hallelujah. We're going to even start from verse 1. And then we will read and see how is the Lord helping us. Hallelujah. Amen. So on Galatians chapter 4 verse 1. Go ahead please. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differed nothing from a servant, though... He be Lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed for the father. Verse 3. 
Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. Verse 4. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. To redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Verse 6. And because he has sons, God had sent forth the spirit of his son into your, your heart, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then a heir of God through Christ. Verse 8. How be it then, when he knew not, not God, he did service unto them which by nature are no gods. Verse 9. But now, after that he have known God, or rather are known of God, how turn he again do to the weak and beguily element whereunto he desire again to be in bondage? Hallelujah. Amen. A amen. So divine appointment. Let, 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 get, get me back, please, on the verse one. The verse one says, Now I say that the heir, as long as is a child, differeth nothing from his servant. Through, the, through he be Lord of all. So you are appointed for something that God has designed in order to shift and the earth, in order to change things. But if you are not entering into that appointment, even though that you are the Lord of those things, meaning you are given those things to operate into them, still it will not happen. Hallelujah. You ought to be able to understand, to grasp, and to seize what God has bestowed upon you. In the, in the story of the church and ministry, it happened often time that people has shifted the story of the church because they have understood what was the purpose of God upon them. We go all the way back to the time of Abraham. Abraham was in a position where he did not know God, but he still was able to hear the voice of the Lord calling him among the people he was living in. Sometimes when God is calling you from among the brethren, from among your family, from among the things that you are doing, you ought to be able to understand that you have been scheduled for a change. Hallelujah. Let me repeat again. When God is separating you, he's calling you apart, he's setting you apart in order to enter into his goodness. When he calls you, you ought to understand that you have been scheduled for a change. And that chain is a chain that brings in your life the will of God to be manifested and to operate through that will the goodness of God continually. Hallelujah. So, on verse 2, please give me verse 2, please. Verse 2 says that when the child is Lord of all, but is still a child, he is under tutor, tut tutors and governors until the time appointed, hallelujah, of the father, until the time scheduled by God, hallelujah. I, I, want, I want somebody to tell to somebody, your story is scheduled for change, hallelujah. Your story is scheduled for change. And what God is doing right now is to utilize a man a mouth, a, a, a voice to remind and inform you and let you know that your story is scheduled for change. The Bible says that, let's, let's go back again, please, on, on that word, on verse 2. On verse 2, the Bible says that even though the child has received benefit, even though the child has received uh, um, uh, grace and has received increase, he cannot operate into it until the scheduled time that will shift his entire life when he enter into that scheduled time. So in verse 2, that it says he's under tutors and governors until the time 
appointed of the Father. Give me verse 3, please. In verse 3, the Bible says, Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of this world. And verse 4 says, But when the fullness of the time was come, meaning when the scheduled time that God has put over your life, has set up over your life arrives even if you don't want it you will enter it hallelujah because when god schedules something over the life of somebody that thing that is scheduled will happen and we enter your life you may respond to it differently but it will happen the reason for is because god is faithful to his word let me give you a picture the bible says that in the time of the children of Israel, when they were under bondage, they could not have anything and they were oppressed by the enemy, by the people of Egypt, by Pharaoh. But God has appointed for them, a schedule for them, a change of their story. Hallelujah. And that schedule that he did was through Abraham. When the time of that schedule arrived, even though the children of Israel did not want to get out, they got out. Hallelujah. Even when they were attempting to, to, to prevent the ways of God to come to pass because they believed that, oh, you see, this was a, a place where we were good, we were so forth. God says, so I have scheduled your story for a change. And that schedule that he has placed on you, he is faithful to fulfill it and he will not allow people to thwart it. Now, you may not enter into that schedule in the sense where you may not benefit from that schedule. You may not benefit from that change, but God's faithfulness will bring that schedule to pass. That's why I say and I repeat, he has scheduled your story for a change. Give me back the word, please. On, on verse 4, he says, But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made of a woman, made under the law. And verse 5 says, To redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoptions of sons. Verse 6 says, And because ye are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your heart, crying, Abba, Father. That schedule of the Lord is for purpose. God is scheduling your life for a change, your story for a change, for a purpose. First thing, in the life of the man of Gandhara, the madman of Gandhara, he was scheduled for a change. Hallelujah. Regardless of the demons, regardless of the oppositions, regardless of the challenges, regardless of the adversities, regardless of the line of curse from the family bloodline, God still schedules you for a change. Now, you may, again, you may not enter that change or want that change, but the faithfulness of God will not stop because of the unfaithfulness of people. For the word of God says, even if we are unfaithful, he remains faithful. So the divine appointment is the first shift, the first dimension in which God scheduled you for a change. Why? As the Lord is coming back, he's coming back for two things. He's coming back for a church that is standing. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I am standing. Somebody say, I am standing on the ground of an appointed time by the Lord. As you are standing, what happened is that the Lord is coming back. And you got to be ready into two levels. The first level is that he says he's coming back for a holy church. Hallelujah. Since you and I, we are a church, we are the church, we form the church. 
Each one of us as the church, we come together to be the body of Christ. And as we become the church of Christ and we come to fellowship, the first thing that the Lord wants us to do as he's coming back is that we remain in the fellowship. So the first thing is we out to remain in the fellowship. The second thing as he's coming back into that appointment he gave us is that we are to occupy until he comes. Let me tell you something. There is a need from the Lord to appoint you as a person that will shift the story of your own life, the life of your neighbor, of your friends, the life of your parents, the life of your family, the life of your community. God is appointing you for that reason. Now, you may not have a good understanding of the ways of God, but still it does not prevent the Lord to utilize his goodness towards you. You see, the grace of God operates when you are even the most and the most weak in your strength, in your ability to function into something. Let me take you an example. When somebody has a desire, to build whatever you are attempting to build, God will give you either somebody to help you build or he will bring into your spirit some ideas that will help you understand how to build what he wants. When God scheduled you for this type of change, you must believe in your heart that the reason why he's doing so is because he's coming back to ask you what have you done with what I have given you. And as he's coming back to ask you what have you done, you have to be able to give him an answer. And I would say a positive answer. So the first one is a divine appointment that shifts into the story that God has scheduled for your life, for a change. Hallelujah. The second thing is the call to surrender. So let's read from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 12. And we're going to even start from verse 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, we're going to start all the way from verse 1. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, starting from verse 1. Mm-hmm. It is not expedient for me, doubtless to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. Verse 2. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago. Whether in the body I cannot tell or whether out of the body I cannot tell. God knew, knew it. Such an one caught up to the third heaven. Verse 3. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. Verse 4. How that he was caught up into paradise and heard unsp unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Verse 5. Of such an one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but in mine infirmities. Verse 6. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. For I will say the truth, but now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. Verse 7, and lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. Verse 8, for this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Hallelujah. Amen. And he said in verse 9, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength 
is made perfect in weakness, most gladly therefore will I glory, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. The second dimension into the schedule change that God has made over your life, over your story, is a call to surrender. You see, we are called to surrender something. We are called to surrender something. And it comes first and foremost with surrendering our will. Hallelujah. When you surrender your will to the Lord, you enter into the will. Now, in that will, what I'm talking about, that will, I'm talking about the will that is written. Such like a person or a man or a father or a mother writes down a will to provide that will after the death so that the, the people or the children or the beneficiary be able to receive the goodness of that will. So the Lord has written in your life his will. But for you to have that will from him, you need to surrender your will. Again, as you are scheduled for a change, as you are scheduled for your story to shift, as you are scheduled for the things that God has planned in your life to shift, after you have understood that you are appointed for a change, you need now to surrender that will. When you surrender your will, what you do is that you cause God or you authorize, should I say, you authorize the goodness of God to work in you stronger than your strength. Hallelujah. When you surrender your will, you authorize the strength and the goodness of God to work in you stronger Done your strength. That's why Paul said that even though I have come in a place of great understanding of the kingdom, even though I come in a place of great strength in my spiritual understanding of the things I want to do, whether they are physical, whether they are spiritual, whether they are a ministry, even though I came to understand those things, whether they are business, whether they are schools, whether they are mer whatever that is, it says, I still have some infirmities in my body, meaning I'm not capable to function with my physical body in order to be able to achieve certain things I would like to achieve. Put it as a race, running a race. When he's talking about infirmities, he's talking about physical limitation. So as he's looking at those physical limitations, he's thinking, if I am appointed for a change, if God has scheduled my life for a change, I'll come that in my physical body, I am not able to go to that. Listen, Moses in his physical body was not able to go as he was old because he was 80 years old. Hallelujah. When God called him, he was 80 years old. But regardless of how his bones may have been tired, when the call of God was upon him, the bones that were in him received strength to continue the will and the call of God. So you are scheduled to receive strength from the Lord to help you in your brokenness in order to be put together to achieve the plan that God has called you for. So the call to surrender your will. As you enter into the will of God, you start understanding that there is no more time for me to sit down and cry. There is no more time for me to sit down and complain. There is no more time for me to sit down and not do so, so, and so. Because God has appointed you to strengthen the brethren, to strengthen the church, to strengthen the ministry he's called you in. He has appointed you to strengthen your community. He has appointed you to strengthen 
understand your surrounding. So instead of sitting and complaining, why is the pastor not doing this? Why is the apostle not doing this? Why is the church not doing this? What are you able to do by the strength of God because you are appointed for such a time in order to bring the shift of that change for the story of that place to transform and your story to be transformed along with. So look at the appointment that God has placed over your life and surrender to that will. The third element, hallelujah, of the seven major mechanisms of divine scheduling for a perpetual, perpetual change, the third element is the power of transformation. Hallelujah. I love this one. <laughs> the power of transformation. You know, sometimes you may look at yourself and you may be thinking, I may not have this and this and this and that. Sometimes you may be looking at yourself and thinking that I may not be able to do this and this and that. And sometimes you are waiting that somebody comes to help you go somewhere, to help you do something, to help you shift something. But let me tell you something. There is good news. God has bestowed upon those whom he has called a power to transform things from raw material. Hallelujah. Say to somebody, you have received the divine power to transform things with your raw material. Let me explain this for you. For this, we're going to go in the word. Hallelujah. And we're going to get the word in the book of uh, Romans chapter 12. We're going to start with verse, we're going to start with verse 1. So Romans chapter 12, we're going to start with verse 1. Go ahead, please. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Mm -hmm. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that he presents your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God. Hold, hold on a second. I, I, want, I, want to, I want to remind you of something over here. It says, I beseech you, brethren, so you and I to present our body, hallelujah, as a living sacrifice, which is the reasonable service. You see, when you go to church or you go to ministry or you go to work or you go to a business, whatever you go to, you have to remember something. You are not going into there in order to receive, but you're going into there in, in order to transform it. I, are you what I'm saying? Let me say it again. You may believe that you go into some places to receive something. But let me tell you something. God is calling you individually to go in and to transform things. So the power of transformation is set upon your life to help you transform and shift and change things. Why will it be your neighbor that will be doing it when you are just as a man, as a woman, as a human being, as your neighbor? The Bible says that uh, Elijah, he was not different from us. Hallelujah. Elijah was no different from us, but he had something particular. He was a man of prayer. And he understood to pray with fervency. When the things are to come to pass, when the things are to be shifted, he understood to pray. Now, let me tell you something. The word of God tells us that as the Lord is coming back, he wants you and I to be vigilant, to be watching. Hallelujah. He says, pray and watch. 
So the power of transformation is something God authorized in your life, deposit in your life to cause your way of thinking to change so that the things that you do with your hands will be transformed. Let me say that again. God is causing your way of thinking to change so that the things that you do with your hands will be transformed. Give me the word in Romans chapter 12, please. Let's read it again. Go ahead. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that he presents your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2. And be not confirmed to this world, but be he transformed by the renewing of your mind, that he may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may be able to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, the power of transformation comes first and foremost from God. And it enters your mind to understand that principle, to accept that principle, to espouse that principle, to function with that principle in order to fulfill the will of God. How? By knowing first and the first and foremost, knowing what is good, what God calls good. And second, knowing what God calls acceptable. And third, knowing what is perfect plan of God. In that power of transformation, he will help you to utilize any and every raw material. Think about the 5,000 who did not have food to eat. The Lord look at the disciples. He look at you right now, whatever you're sitting at right now. He look at you right now and he's thinking, what do you have in your hands to make a shift and a change? And you're thinking, I don't have any. No, change your way of thinking. God says, what do you have? When he asks you the question to know what you have, it is because he has already given you the ability to have it. Hallelujah. He. When the Lord is asking you the question, what do you have? It means the ability before the question has already been sent ahead of time to cause you to shift and to transform from your mindset. Because when the disciple heard the question from the Lord, are you able to feed them? Go feed them. What do you have? They, they were thinking, how, 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 how are we going to do it? The Lord was not asking them, are you going to do it? <laughs> Hallelujah. Please tell to somebody, God is not asking you, how are you going to do it? You're thinking, but how am going to fulfill this? How am going to, but let, let me tell you something. When he brought the people, they were all seated. He looked at them. The Bible said they were hungry, for they have been there for a long time. And they have listened to the word of God. And as they have listened to the word of God, they did not understand certain principles that God was already working in their life for giving them an ability to transform everything they touch. First from their mindset to what they touch. When God says that everything that your hand will touch will prosper, what it means? It means your mindset understand that whatever you have is capable to be multiplied. How? By utilizing it as a power of transformation. Let me give you an example. Think of this. You have in your hands, um, I would call it baking soda, right? And then you're thinking it is for baking to do food. 
And then you are received or you receive a call to go do a change or a cleaning of something. And then you believe all I have is baking soda to do some food. And you think I don't have the money to buy this, to buy this, to buy this, to buy this in order to have the tools to go clean. But when you start asking to the Lord for direction, he will let you know that the baking soda that you have in your hands can be mixed up as a tool, as a, uh, 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 as a useful tool to clean whatever you want to clean. So while the baking soda is set for some kind of food utilization, you can utilize the same baking soda, mix it with some vinegar, and then you are ready to clean anything. <laughs> Hallelujah. So your way of thinking will help you change and transform what is in your hands. Whether it is the things that God put in your hands or the ideas that it brings in your mind. Why? Because he wants you, he wants me to be able to be set, ready, and to occupy until he comes. Remember, he will ask you what have you done with what I have placed in your hands? You will be thinking, I did not receive much. But God says, your ability to receive is what is in your hand. So if you did not receive 100, it means you were wired for 30. If you did not receive 30, you were wired for 60. If you did not receive 60, you were wired for 100. Whatever you were wired at, you must fulfill it into that that level instead of looking on the side and expecting something else that God did not wire you for. So the transformation in your mind will help everything that God placed in your hand to be transformed. Somebody say power of transformation. Mm. There are cycles in what God has process you through in order to deposit into you. So you believe that God has called you. Or you believe that God has appointed you. Or you don't even know what is your calling. You don't even know what is your purpose. Let me tell you something. God is calling you today as he's coming back for you and I, as he's coming back for the church. He's calling you not to remain idle. He's calling you to move and to shift in the direction in which he has called the people of God. See, those he, hey, Lord God, those he called from Israel, the people who were of Israel in Egypt, uh, even the one at the time of going out. The Bible says when they were going out, there were even some Egyptian, hallelujah, who mingled with them and who went out. Why? Because they understood that there was a God upon their life who were doing something that was different. God is calling you. The Lord is calling you. Not your neighbor, you. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's calling you so that uh, you can be utilized to shift something. It comes first from the transformation of your mind. You must be transformed and renewed in your mind. And when that transformation enters in your mind, you are set and you are scheduled for your story to change. I remember when I was younger, I would look at people and they were able to do certain things, achieve certain things. And I was always wondering, how am I going to do it? Because I did not understand. But when God appointed time, scheduled time arrived, and dependently of myself, hallelujah, I was only able to accept that call 
to accept that schedule, to enter that appointed time, and suddenly there was a shift in my life that caused so many things that were stagnant to transform and to change. Why? God is calling you individually. He's calling you particularly so that you can be utilized in order to bring his will upon the earth. Ministry, church, service, business. Hallelujah. Some of you, God is calling you to be investors. And you're thinking, I don't even have money to buy Ndole. <laughs> Amen. Some of you, God is calling to be investors. You're thinking, I cannot even buy a Nshima. But listen, when God is calling you, he's not calling you so that uh, you become something that he did not want you to be. He's calling you, and before he calls you, he deposits in you the ability to do the call for which he called you. Are you know what I'm saying? The Bible says this. For he, he gives us the will. Amen. To do his will. Hallelujah. He gave us the will to do his will. So give me back the word, please. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. By doing so, your heart will stop racing into ideas where God did not send you to by letting the Spirit of God transform your understanding. You will now agree that the Word of God is your compass, and because is your compass, the Word of God, you will also agree that you need to fulfill the purpose of God. And because you will need to agree, you will agree that you need to fulfill the purpose of God. You will move in the direction that God is leading you, whether. It it is to strengthen your brother or your sister. Whether it is to develop something. You know, sometimes you see some problems and you're thinking there are too many problems. If you change the way of saying, you will see that the problem is an opportunity for a change. Hallelujah. Sometimes you need to shift the way you look at things in order to transform them. And God is calling you to that. The fourth one is embracing your purpose. Hallelujah. Embracing your purpose, your calling. God called each one of you. He called each one of us. He called you. Here's the thing. You do not call God first. He called you first. For a matter of fact, you, did not, you, you were not created first. Amen. He was there first. <laughs> Hallelujah. So because he called you first, the purpose for which he called you first and foremost is to fulfill his divine mandate. What is the divine mandate? Is to bring the people, the souls of people in the kingdom. Hallelujah. Tell to somebody, I am called. I am appointed. Hallelujah. For change. No, 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 you, you, you have to say it uh, like with belief. I am called and I am appointed for change. The, the problem is if you are expecting somebody to help you change something you need to change, it may happen. But it may happen in a way that is not supposed or it may happen in a way that will be taking too much time. But if you realize that you yourself, you are called and appointed to shift things and to make change, you will be an available, oh God, you will be an, an available vessel in order to be utilized by God.
embracing your purpose, your calling. Let's take the book of Ephesians chapter 2. And we're going to read from verse, let's read from verse 7. Ephesians chapter 2, starting from verse 7. Mm-hmm. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Okay. He is going to show us, amen, in the age to come, the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us. Hallelujah. See, you understand and must need to understand that as Christ is coming back, he's not just coming back to look like who is praying or who is just uh, singing. No, he's coming back to take us into something beautiful. Hallelujah. But for you to go into that beauty of the kingdom, into that beauty of heaven, you must be able to occupy and to fulfill in your particular appointment in this earth. What are you called for? Some of you, you know, there was... A man at one time who came and he said, I'm looking for a church where there are good choir. You know, you know, let, let me let me help you with something. You cannot be looking for a church. Hallelujah. The word of God says that when Abraham went out, he was looking for a land whom founder was God. Hallelujah. You're looking for a church whose things please you instead of looking for a church whose founder is God. Are you what I'm saying? Because when you enter into the place where God wants you to be, even if it is dry, ay, 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 hey, Jesus, somebody said, help me, help me understand. <laughs> Uh, you may be thinking, I'm looking for a place with buildings and greens pasture. No, God was sending Abraham in a place that was different. He's sending you in places that are different. Listen, if everything you want in life is given in your hands, I tell you, you will be Speaking and speaking and speaking and complaining that you don't have enough. But when you know that what you're looking for, it is God who is the author, the founder, and the finisher of it, you become content of that thing and you utilize whatever you have received to transform it in order to fulfill your purpose. Let me help you with this one. As God called you, as he appointed you, what he's expecting of you first is that you present your body as a living sacrifice. And then you transform your way of thinking. How? By agreeing more with the word of God than agreeing with the textbooks of men. Hallelujah. If you have a problem... Search God. Don't search Google. (laughs) Hallelujah. So first thing first, you must be able to let your living body to be presented unto God for a change. You see, when somebody has something wrong in them, if they go to the doctor to do a surgery, they present the body. Hallelujah. And if the surgery has to be done, uh, it will be done. They cannot have the surgery done on on the on the on the phone. <laughs> Amen. They cannot have the surgery done. Uh, I don't know through through. They, they have to present the body. So anyway, so God is calling you to present yourself first. Second, change your mind, change your mindset, change your way of thinking. How by agreeing more with the word of God than you agree with the textbooks of men or with the philosophy of men or the culture. Change of your way of thinking. Because when God tells you, you are able to do so, and somebody tells you, 
you are bad and you're good for nothing if you believe that philosophy, you won't ac uh, ac succeed and achieve what God called you for. So you have to first believe what God says. As you do so, you embrace your purpose. You embrace your calling. You embrace your divine appointed calling. The fifth one, amen. The fifth one is the community of faith. Now, you see, sometimes people want to grow either in their business, in their, in their family, in their whatever, but they sometimes want to do it alone. No, you can't. Let me explain you something. The Lord Jesus did not have the need in the sense where he was needy. No, he had no need of human being to come with him to do ministry. Hallelujah. Because by himself, he could have achieved it. Hallelujah. But what he did, he brought with him other people to achieve something. Hallelujah. He brought the idea of family and community. First and foremost, God, when he made everything, he made Adam and then he understood there is a need for a community. Amen? So he created Eve so that they can form a community. You cannot go alone outside of your source of life. God has what we call an assigned jurisdiction over your life. Where God has appointed you or sent you. If it is in the church, if it's in, the, in this district or district where God has assigned you, it is there you will receive the flow of the change. It is there you will receive the flow of the breakthrough until he assigns you for something else. So for you to go in a place and you enter in, you go by asking God, where is the place you want me to be? When he shows you that place, when you enter, if you see it dry, it means you are Brought into that place to bring water. Hallelujah. So you enter the community of faith to strengthen, to strengthen, to gather, to strengthen, and to gather. As I was saying, there was a man, one time he said, I'm looking for a church. With a great choir. I look at him and I say, Father, if you're looking for a church with a great choir, you're probably not in the right church. <laughs> Amen. But here's the problem. He said that he is a minister of, uh, of worship. And as he's a minister of worship, he has been leading ministry and worship in Nigeria. And when he came in the United States, he was looking for a church to find that same. I say, you see, there is a problem in your mind. Let me explain to you something. The Bible says that he gave us apostles prophets, uh, evangelists, pastors, teachers for the equipping of the saints. But so that you be equipped unto every good work. Amen. So if you go to that place and you don't find a choir and you are a choir director, what do you do? Uh, you know what I'm saying? You are a great singer. You go somewhere where people sing like uh, like frogs. <laughs> and you sing, or they sing wrong. But what do you do? Hallelujah. God is calling you particularly to bring a change because you are scheduled for your life to change so that your life that changes affects somebody else's life so that the kingdom of God grows. If all singers go together to pray, 
tell me who going to sing. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, and, and so you got to understand that God is not associating the people who have all the quality together. No. He associates people of less quality with other people with much quality. Are you what I'm saying? He understands balance. For high on, sharpen, high on. So you have been scheduled for a change. That's why you're right here. You have been scheduled for a change. That is the reason why you are right here. But that change will not enter your life until you accept that the time has arrived. Tell to somebody, the time has arrived. The time has arrived. You have been scheduled for that change. We're going to take the book of Hebrew. Chapter 10. And we're going to read from verse 24 to 25. Hebrew chapter 10, starting from verse 24. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Verse 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as he see the day approaching. Hallelujah. Amen. So, amen. We're receiving a message over here to let us know that uh, we have... Uh, arrived for the time that was appointed i was not informed <laughs> amen <laughs> hallelujah but thank god hallelujah so let me wrap up on this one the first thing that we saw is the divine appointment which is a chaos moment into the scheduling of your life for a transformation divine appointment god appoints you into his schedule into his timeline Second, he calls you to surrender. Third, he asks you to believe into the power of transformation from your mind down to the things that you touch. The fifth, you are to enter into the community of faith. You must remain connected to the community of faith among the brethren. The sixth one, God is calling you onto the ministry of reconciliation. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 18, can you read that for me, please? Put it on the screen quickly for me. We have just about 10 minutes left. So 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 18. Mm -hmm. And all things are of God, mm -hmm. who had reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and had given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Hallelujah. Amen. So God is giving you the ability you also become part of the reconciliation. Which ministry of reconciliation? To bring people outside of the kingdom into the kingdom. Hallelujah. As Christ is coming back, he's asking you, he's asking me to activate ourselves as our life is transformed, it's changed. This change brings also in the life of somebody else the same change. So we are called unto the ministry of reconciliation. And the end is the hope of glory. Can you give me please Romans chapter 8? Verse 18. Romans chapter 8 verse 18. Mm -hmm. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. First Hallelujah. Amen. For I go, go ahead. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Go ahead. The, the next Verse one. Verse 19. Mm -hmm. For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. Hallelujah. Amen. So uh, let, let me wrap it up over here. And then we we'll pray. The earnest manifestation, the expectation of the world, of many people, is to see the schedule 
appointed time over your life, over your story to come to pass. The expected schedule of God upon you is to bring that story to come to pass. You have received Christ. Or you may not have even known him yet. And you're asking to yourself, I, I will be able and capable to fulfill the good pleasure of God. What do I need to do? What are the steps I need to do? I gave you seven steps. One, believe that there is a divine appointment over your life. Believe that he has scheduled you. Believe. The second one, you got to surrender. Surrender your will. Surrender your will. The third one, you must believe to the power in the power of transformation that God is giving you to be transformed in your mind so that you can transform what you touch. So you can transform things around. So you can transform circumstances. The fourth one, you got to embrace the purpose that God has called you for. To bring people into his kingdom. To bring people into his will. And for you yourself to become an answer to somebody else. And to become the key that you were looking for. And then the sixth is that the, 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 the fifth is the community of the church of faith. You must be connected. The sixth is the ministry of reconciliation. And finally, the hope of glory. Do not consider the things that you see before you as challenges to take you away, as challenges to, to remove you from the will of God. Do not consider them as something that prevents you. You see, I was talking with the businessman. By the grace of God, God has allowed us to have a company. And as we were talking, I was explaining unto him the different plans that I have to expand the company and to be able to achieve a gross revenue. And as we were speaking, he said, but you see, there are people who have been all around for years and they have established their brain for years and they have been for 100 years and 120 years. And I'm thinking... He does not realize that there's people that started one day. <laughs> Hallelujah. He does not realize that you don't go to 100 years by start counting at 119. You start counting at zero until you enter the 120. So whatever God is looking you at and finding you at, I pray that your life from the place you at, I pray that your life from the place you are right now, wherever you are right now, whether you have already climbed over the mountains, whether you are still down in the valley, whether you are still looking around for a shift or you are still looking around for a way, whatever that is, I pray that your day today is the appointed time in which God has looked for you to shift your life, to shift your story, and to cause you to become a key for other people, to cause you to become an answer for your own family, to cause you to become an answer for your own problems, because there are ideas that God has deposited in you, which is the answer for the problem that you have. You must not sit down idle, but you must understand that God is calling you right now to shift your mindset. And as you shift your mindset, you no longer think as a dreamer, but you start thinking as a ruler. Your dreams will not remain in the spiritual, but you will rule over your dream to cause them to manifest in the physical. Why? God has placed in your hand the ability to transform, the ability to bring it to pass. Utilize it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.